as teachers, you probably see the food pyramid every day. It's in every cafeteria, every school system, and it's usually its most popular places are hospitals and schools. Today I'm going to explain to you how the food pyramid was created, why it was created, and how we can put it to use. According to cpp.gov, it was created by the United States Department of Agriculture and the Human and Health Services. They chose 13 scientists and physicians for this task. It took them a year, five meetings, and it, they came up with a 364-page analysis. It's created every five years. The next one, for 2010, is supposed to come out in July. So what did they focus on? Their main focuses were energy. Energy is calories in general. The food that you're eating now, it doesn't matter what type of food it is or what food group it comes from, energy is considered calories. Discretionary calories are anything that's not in the food group or if you exceed this food group. So say for example, you're a milk lover, you love ice cream, and you eat two servings of ice cream, which is a cup, just two servings, and then you still want your three glasses of milk a day. That would be considered discretionary calories. Then third and fourth are fat and carbohydrates. This is where most Americans get most of their calories. And this is the most density in the calories. Okay. So mypyramid.gov. So what did they, after they come up, what did they focus on? You know, they said, how can we help, how can we help people understand what this means? So their dietary guidelines were to make smart choices for every smart for every food group, find a balance in between food and physical activity. Um, it's recommended that we exercise 60 minutes a day, and it's proposed that in the 2010 it's going to be 90 minutes. Um, and then also that we get the most out of our calories. So what is a healthy diet? A healthy diet is one that basically you meet all the food groups. So you have all your daily recommendations on fruits, vegetables, grains, and milk products. And it recommends that we have whole grains and fat-free or low-fat milk products. But also included our meats. And we'll get into that more because it's not just what we think of as beef and chicken that counts in our meat category. But one that has, that's low in saturated fat, that has zero trans fat, cholesterol, and salt. Um, our biggest disease in America is type 2 diabetes, and it can be hereditary, but it's usually developed, and it's caused of too much cholesterol and too much added sugar. So let's break it down. We have grains, vegetables, fruits, milks, meat, and beans. And if you notice that they help us out here, where they make it bigger in places that we need more of, and smaller in the ones that we don't. And you'll notice that there's a yellow line here that's not a food group, and we'll talk about that later. So first off, grains separates it into two groups. We have whole grains and refined grains. Um, to make that a little bit simpler, it's just usually 100% whole grain and then white refined, which is usually bleached. And it breaks it down into a serving. We recommend six ounces a day. One ounce is a, a slice of bread, a cup, a cup of cooked cereal or ready to eat, and cooked rice and pasta. So basically, you had a sandwich today for lunch. You had a PB&J, turkey sandwich, whatever you prefer. You have two pieces of bread, that's two ounces, which is two servings. This is the category where most Americans exceed the daily amount. Next is vegetables. They recommend it's two and a half cups a day. Most Americans don't get enough of this. Okay, so one cup of cooked or raw vegetables, one cup of vegetable juice, usually V8, Two cups of raw leafy, leafy greens, all counts as one serving. Next is fruit. Fruits can be fresh, canned, frozen, or dried. Um, it recommends two cups a day. One cup of fruit, usually like a small apple, is half a cup. So think of it like that. The size of your fist, you know, an orange or something like that, it's usually one cup. Uh, in general, you have your, you know, your cup of fruit juice, half a cup of dried fruit counts as one cup. Milk, three servings a day, one cup of milk or yogurt, one and a half ounces of natural cheese, or two ounces of processed cheese counts as an ounce. And let it be noted, it surprised me here, not that all of these, but cream cheese does not count. Butter, cream, are not considered a serving under uh, the recommendations. 
even though cream cheese has a lot of protein, it does not have a significant amount of calcium. So that's why it's not recommended. Meat and beans. This is where it gets kind of tricky. It's five and a half ounces recommended daily. Now, most men exceed this, and most women usually don't come close to this. Um, so one ounce of meat, poultry fish, one quarter of cooked dried beans, one egg, one tablespoon of peanut butter. I dare you to try to put one tablespoon of <laughs> peanut butter on your PB&J and see if it tastes good. Half an ounce of nuts or seeds, all count. So think about when you go out to eat. The average chicken is, for lunch, is usually six ounces. And for dinner, it's eight ounces. Now think about your steaks. It's usually anywhere from 12 to 20. And that's three days worth of meat products. That's where men usually get caught up in this. So this, according to feltsource.com, is going to be, it's a proposal for the 2010 um, food chart. And some things have changed. The grains have stayed the same. They emphasize that they won't have to be whole. They recommend all of them to be whole. But they're, you know, it's a minimum of half. Uh, the vegetables is the same. The fruits have went down half a cup. I know it's hard to see. Uh, the milk is the same, but it has a little footnote here from t ages 2 to 8. It recommends two cups a day. And when I was brought up in school, that's whenever we're kids, we're, that's whenever we're supposed to have the most calcium to build our bones. It's quite interesting that they changed that. And meat and beans have even went down half an ounce. So now you can, you're supposed to eat less. And it recommends 1,800 calories a day, where the other one recommended 2,000. So that tells me, as an American, that we're eating too much and that we need to cut back. And obviously, we're not having enough physical activity for that. Now, this yellow margin that I spoke of earlier is the oils margin. It's not a food group but we must contain it to have a good healthy lifestyle. And they recommend corn, soybean, or canola oil, basically any heart healthy oil. Um, so in review, the food pyramid was created to help us make smart choices, find a balance between food and physical activity, get the most nutrition out of our calories, and stay within our dietary needs. So hopefully, after looking at the My Pyramid, understanding it, seeing where it came from and how to use it, and we can put it into our daily lives. Thank you.